Hello my Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? So this is actually a precursor to a series that I'm doing on soil. And in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of how to reuse your potting soil. But in the future, we're going to be getting more into the depth of potting soil and garden soil and nutrients and chemistry and physics and all that fun stuff but for right now let's learn how to make it so every year i reuse all my potting soil and as you can see i have little root containers <laughs> that are literally shaped like my pots and what i do is i go into them and i start pulling them all apart now you're gonna notice I'm pulling out some really crazy things and this is not staged. It's completely real life for me. So what I do with the bottoms of my pots is I actually put things like pool noodles or broken containers or containers that I won't be using in the future, such as that one. And what I do is I fill up the bottom of the pot so I don't have to fill the entire pot with soil. Now this is useful to me because some of my plants, especially flowers, don't have deep rooting systems. They usually kind of just stay on the surface. So I don't need all that extra soil at the bottom. So what I do to conserve my soil is I fill the bottom of the containers up with junk, essentially. Um, I'm reusing it, it's environmentally friendly. I'm not consuming any of the food that comes out of those containers because they're purely for aesthetics and for flowers, so it works for me. Now what I do is I break up all these clumps with all these roots and I go through with my hands and I find any large clumps of debris. Now if it's not just crumbling or separating under my hands, then what I'll do is I'll actually remove that debris, but I'll try to leave in as much organic matter as possible. Now, you're probably thinking it has to do with nutrients. It has nothing to do with nutrients. It has everything to do with airflow. It takes a really long time for the soil to break down organic matter into a usable form for a plant. So essentially all these clumps of roots and leaves are doing is acting as porosity. So that is why I leave it in there. It has nothing to do with nutrients and everything to do with porosity. Now over time with heat and water and life, those larger pieces will compost and eventually turn into soil, but I don't expect that to happen this year. You can tell I'm having way too much fun here. Also, I hope you like the idea of the kitty pool. This is something that I've done for years. My dogs used to play in it and then they decided they didn't like water anymore, so this now has become my giant earth sorter. <laughs> so, it's pretty nice actually. I'm gonna hit fast forward on this, but I do wanna show you exactly how much time I spend on one swimming pool. I just wanna kinda hit home that you do need to just take the time to sort through this soil and fluff it and preen it and make it nice because it's not just for your plants but it's also so your pots look good and they don't look like they're full of junk so you, you really want to make sure you sort through this pile um, sometimes one swimming pool will take me half an hour an hour depending on what pots I've decided to empty into the area so now I have my bag of cow manure this cow manure is just regular old stuff from Home Depot, it's three dollars a bag. And what I do is I do one bag per swimming pool. So I'll dump this entire bag in, but I'll only do about half 
Um, I dug a hole in the middle because it's easier to mix in if you dig little trenches in the soil. But I can only fit about half in at a time just because it's full. So what I'll do is I'll gently mix up the rest of the pool. Oh, this one I did get it all in. So that is what it looks like. That is the brand that I used. Um, fun fact, it's not organic unless the cow is organic. <laughs> That's actually true. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you want to hear more about that. So now all I'm going to do is I'm literally going to fold it and knead it like bread. And this is going to take me a while too. So you can tell manure from the peat soil and the soil particles and the perlite and all that stuff. So I'm just going to mix it in here. And what this is doing is it's adding nutrients. It's adding a whole new set of microbiome. It's adding more anchoring products to the physicality of the soil itself. And it's just, it's an all around, it's a good additive to put in your soil. Now there are other things you can add. Um, there's things like vermiculite or perlite. And you don't have to hesitate away from adding those. Um, just make sure you know what you're adding and why you're adding it. So vermiculite, is used for moisture retention, perlite is used for air porosity, not for holding moisture like many folks think. It has to do with aeration um, and getting it to the roots. So here you go, this is a flower pot. This is actually gonna be a herb pot. <laughs> I made a video with this pot and you can see I put a giant container in the bottom and now I'm just gonna fill it up. You're not even going to know what's under there until next year when you go to make soil. So as you can see, this is light, this is fluffy, this is nutrient dense, this is great soil. I'm going to push it down a bit with the pot in there still. And once I water this, it'll go down even more again. You'll notice how much it's gone down actually in my herb video. Clean up the top, and voila, you are done. That's a perfect potted plant. If you guys enjoyed this and you're excited for the soil science series coming soon, please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.